at the GSL Codes round of four. And uh, it is proving to be very close. Uh, we've been talking about this a lot, but the map lineup uh, is, I think, kind of dictating the narrative here for you know how this uh, this series is going between these two. Uh, I think based off you know the way they're shaped. So. Yeah, yeah. The maps are a huge part of it. Each yeah. map plays out different. Each map has a different set of balances and good strategies and things like that. So, not surprised to see it. All right, so you know we're going on to Belshir Vestige or Vestige. I think we stopped going <laughs> to Vestige a while ago. We couldn't figure out which way to call this map. Um, what do you think we're going to need to see here from Innovation on this map? Because it let's just say, I'm going to call this right now. I think if Innovation wins on this map, I think he actually takes the series. Uh, you know, I would not be surprised if he took the yeah. series if he wins here. Uh, I think it's going to be Daybreak's going to be pretty tough. This map's going to be pretty tough. Sure. Daybreak maybe a little bit more doable, but yeah, this this could go either way. I really don't know anymore. Yeah, I, I'm also curious about what kind of build he's actually going to elect here. I'm, I don't know, man. This is a this is a tough situation here. You know, the, the Zerg starts out with it a little bit uh, easier and ends a little bit harder. Um, you guys having fun out here in Las Vegas? Excellent. And it looks like we're almost ready to get this game going. That is right. Game number three, a very important one, because whoever wins this is on game point for the rest of the match. And that always feels really good, Tasis. Yeah, You're like, all right, well, I have, I have a couple more tries to actually win the whole thing there's, there's room to experiment. And, yeah. you know, remember, guys, these are they're going to be using the best possible builds uh, that they have right now. Oh, this is this so is well not, planned dude, out. This is not round of 32, okay? This is not, you know, a situation where... You know, they have to hide some builds because they might want to use it later on. This is going to be the best, the best. All right, looks like we're going to get this going here. Gun versus Nation. Game number three here. Make some noise, guys. We're at the DSL Codex. Vegas. Vegas. It is a big one-on-one -on -one map, and this player that we have over here in the upper left is going to be favored on this. Let's see if he can do it. His idea is... And his opponent in the bottom right, he won with some cheese in game number one. He lost in a macro game in game number two. We're going to see how he does in this game. Game number three, he is... STX Sword Innovation. Really innovation. excited here, Tasis. Yeah, absolutely. To man. see what is innovation going to do, because I feel like... That is true. <laughs> is that Confucius in the audience? Wow. That could have been a tasteless quote, man. I'm not, I'm not completely <laughs> sure it was. All right. We got a... Uh, well, we're going to have a little bit of downtime here where we see what, what exactly they're going to, you know, set yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So let me just tell you guys, uh, there is a raffle after this. If you yes. have one of these GSL Finals cards, uh, there's the serial number on the back is what's going to be used. So stay around after the round of four is done. It's important. You want to win things like a GSL mouse. There's a bunch of sick swag that yeah. we've never actually given out. So, like, Damn. it's a pretty big deal. I would definitely stay I around for that. I that stuff. Yeah. So. Free, free hugs for ZDZ finals. That's good. There's nerd level around. You're from Canada? Where in Canada? I, I, like, I always do this. I, like, yeah, yo, I where? Like, like, where? And then I realize I have headset on. I can't hear you. Where? Oh, Alberta. Anybody else here from Canada? There's not wow. many of them, but they are loud. Yeah, they are loud. They're all spread out there, like little pockets throughout the audience. This is cool. <laughs> um, Just like well, Canada, all spread out. It's there, all Jesus. spread out, yeah. Big country, lots of lakes. Um, so we got the <laughs> command center on the way over here. Um, and you know now we're going to see a fork in the road here. He's either going to go for a mech or he's going to go for some kind of bio play. I think bio play. Yeah. But mech. 
is good on this map too. This isn't one of these maps like, like, like well, we've talked about this with Antigua for like for probably hundreds of hours now for how much we've actually casted. But I mean, that's a map that you have to play a very specific way. This map, I don't think so so much. Yeah, you know, this map hasn't been as as explored, so we could see really anything out of uh, out of innovation. You know, if you know you're going to go into a super long game, maybe you want to go for that mech. It's it's kind of hard to just make a marine army and win on this map. Even when we saw that beautiful push here uh, out of Ryong, he barely won with it. It was so close that to not working, and it was like one of the coolest builds I've ever seen. Now, you know, I feel like with the Terran, in this situation and on these maps, I feel like the Terran has so many builds at his disposal, at his disposal, excuse me, on uh, in this series that he has to choose his cards very carefully. Where I feel like Hyun does not have a ton of different builds so much. No, and no. it's much more about just having that really perfect execution. Yeah, there's you not know? that many Zerg builds really. I'm sure there's a few Zerg players that are angry at that, but that's uh, right. Uh, no, sure. overall, if you're a macro-based Zerg like Hyun, you kind of play in the same few patterns based upon yeah. which tech you want to go for. I mean, it's true for all the races. They're all sort of reactionary, but yeah. Zerg's like super reactionary. I mean, basically, if you're a good Zerg player, you just sort of orbit around the, the outside of the guy's base taking peaks. Then you're like, aha, he took two gases. And then that you know, yeah. changes the algorithm of your build. And then you come back and you go, okay, he's got two factories. That's, and, you know, that's true. But, you know, since life really popped up last GSL season, we've seen Zergs put a little bit more offense on and kind of try to dictate the game a little bit more. And we actually saw that from Hyun in the last game where, you know, he did a big attack and then just kind of ran around the map and, and forced innovation into weird circumstances. Yeah, you know, um, it's, 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 it's kind of cool, you know, with life actually playing a lot. Like he was a StarCraft 1 Zerg. He looked kind of like Jadong. Yeah. But, you know, with StarCraft 1 Jadong here in StarCraft 2, it's kind of neat to see that the styles have changed. But Hyun, I feel, is more of uh, what we just described, a super reactionary style. Yeah. Now, we do have a second factory on the way, and an Overlord peeked in there while we were talking and saw that a starport was coming up. But he's not going to know about the second factory. He already pulled away, and the second factory is pretty well hidden down to the south. So uh, he might get caught off guard here. You know, he's probably going to go for just Reactor Hellion Banshee defense, but Reactor Hellion plus another factory and Blue Flame, that is going to change all the math on everything. And if Hyun was just going to skimp by on defense, he's going to be in a lot of trouble now. Now we saw there, uh, Hyun in the uh, in the 9 to 15 minute market, this is where you get super interesting stats. It, 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 he wins 86.7% uh, of the time. But if you look um, in the late game, and this is actually what surprised me, because I, when I think of Hyun, I would not think that he's you know under 50% in past 25 minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, exactly. Well, you know, Hyun is kind of new to the GSL overall, so I'm going to chalk it up to that, that he doesn't have enough game it's to just, play. It's, it's a little bit of an anomaly, and it'll then kind of change as time passes. Yeah, I think so. I think so. All right, well, the Hellions are starting to move out. Blue Flame is almost halfway done. Three Hellions being produced at a time right now. And he's going to want to hide his Hellion numbers so that he Okay, this is not on. good. Oh, man, he cannot afford to lose this. Wow. What was that, though? I mean, I think the Banshee actually took way more damage. That was a cocky Banshee. Tasis. That was, yeah, that was uh, definitely He thought he could take sloppy. out three Queens, but Whoop. then the fourth came, so he had to run. <laughs> you know what's funny is... Uh, now he can't even, I mean, he has to either send the Banshee all the way back home and repair it because you actually cannot go around harassing with a, a Banshee that I believe has, what, five hit points? Five hit points yeah. left. Yeah, an Overlord can almost kill that. Yeah, man. <laughs> all right, so we got uh, some Hellions coming up here on the upper right. It looks like Zerg should be okay, but we'll no. see in a second. Now, notice how he keeps showing four, and he's cleared yep. the path up. Yeah. He yeah. has all the watchtowers, and here come all the rest of the Hellions. He actually has 15 right now. And Zerg is going to be blindsided by this oh and God. have no idea this is coming. And all of a sudden, boom, there's going to be a 10 aliens in his base. He has to keep as many drones alive as possible. Oh, and the spike just is. popped that up and Yun's in a lot of trouble. Some beautiful moves here by Innovation going in. A lot of links coming, but with this many with Blue Flame, it looks like he's going to take a ton of damage anyways. Oh my God, doing so much damage to these drones. The Hellions now coming up here, uh, and notice he's notice splitting them up, getting uh, even more drones. This is getting ugly. And look at that. So much damage being dealt. 20 already killed. 22 now before he finally eliminates them. And that was that was good by innovation. And a little yeah. bit unlucky from Hyun. Well, you know, he just picked up his but spy you know crawler. What? That, that's the, okay, hold that thought. Oh. We got more uh, 
And, uh, you know, he, the Zerglings are going to win this fight, but, uh, you know, whenever you get Hellions in the corner like that, the fact that they can, they can spray out that damage from that one angle uh, really helps them out. So, um, yeah, you know, this game goes on. But, again, he said, okay, kind of unlucky he uh, uprooted the spine crawler. Yeah. But let's be honest, the guy only saw, he only showed him four Hellions. I, yeah. Anybody could have uprooted that. Uh, had he been running around with, you know, 11 or more Hellions, he would have for sure not done that. So he's tricked him pretty hard he seriously uh, so has. far. Now, this is a mech follow-up. So the game still should be pretty long unless Hyun really messes up. Or I guess if Innovation really messes up like three times. Uh, but it should go very, very long on this map. But with 10 Mutas coming out, he's given himself a chance to get over there and do a lot of damage before there's any anti-air such as Thor's. And with only a Viking and four Marines that hit flying things, that's yeah. going to be pretty tough to stop. I, I like that we see a lot of Terrans um, actually getting the Viking out. And, um, okay, it looks like the Hellions are going to go back. I thought I was going to have to interrupt myself. So he sees the Mutas now. Um, and there's actually, that's the first eBay, right? Yeah, that's, making, right? that's okay, the first so eBay. That's, this is really bad. I mean, uh, this actually could turn the game upside down. Now, you got to be really smart when you send the Mutas in and attack all the right places perfectly because he can do a ton of damage here. And now he's coming here hitting these SCDs. And this could turn this game around. It looks like we have two Thors about to pop out, but they're not exactly the most nimble units. No, they are not. And in fact, this many Mutas can take out two Thors if you match yeah. the box just right. So that's going to be a big issue. A little bit clumped up there. There we go. A nice split going down. Oh, but we got Hellions counterattacking over here, hitting the drones. This is a bloodbath as far as the workers go. Uh, and the second Thor pops out. It looks like he wants to instead avoid the Thor. Uh, and, okay, we got another heli oh drone over God. here. Oh, God. Absolute brutality going down. 35 drones killed so far. And Hyun, oh, my God, lines up those drones. So many deaths. 43 he's killed. Yeah, I, this is a, getting pretty crazy. Ooh. Okay, even more kills here. If he gets one more shot up. All right, so they have both killed so many of each other's workers. And actually, this really sort of messes up the way the game's going for both players because... This is not a normal game anymore. There's been such an exchange of workers, and now it's possible that Terry might even have so many buildings that he can't even make out of all of them. So this is where you have to have really good instinct as a StarCraft player on both sides. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, he's harassing that third base, harassing in the main a little bit, as we see. But I feel like these SCV deaths don't matter quite as much as the drones. He's getting a really scary army. Well, more Hellion harassment as well. Here's the thing. You can go across the map with Hellions and Thors and actually... Okay, he's not watching those views. You can go across the map with the, uh, 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 Thors and Hellions and actually take them out. Oh, but hold that thought. We have... Looks like the orbital might go down. He needs yeah, to keep might. this alive. Remember, they can drop mules out of there, and he's low on workers. This is a good kill right here, and he does get it. The main. <laughs> we actually have more banshees. Harassment absolutely like too everywhere. Much I want to talk theory, but there's too much stuff going on in this game. Uh, now, a nice transfuse there on the banshee, but the banshee can still continue to deal some damage. And the mute is trying. Okay. I think I get to talk about what's you know, meta stuff for a second. Quick, the mutas are going back across right, the map. Do a quick tasis. You can push across the map with SCVs, Thors, and Hellions. You cannot kill off a Terran's entire base really with mutas. I mean, the amount of time no, that, that takes. True. It, okay, I got it. All right, now we're probably going to go back. Good to job, All right, that was close. Okay, so the Thors are now coming up here, and the Hellions. And this is exactly what I was talking about. And he, you bring a bunch of SCVs, and you auto repair, and it's it's... Well, it's good. It, yeah, it's really good. Well, we have a big harassment going on here and killing a lot off. He is switching into roaches, so if he can get enough roaches, that's very good against Thor Hellion. So he's going to buy time, but Innovation is not giving him time. He just continues to move forward. Yeah, this is a pretty bold move here by Innovation. Uh, how many SCVs does he have, actually? Well, uh, right now he only has 29 against a 56 of his opponent, and in fact these mutas are going to kill this Thor off, and even more damage is going to be okay, dealt. Okay, but this is a lot of Thor's. Thor's can do quite well against Roaches, even though Roaches are the units you tend to make to wipe out Thor's, uh, you know, Roaches and Lakes. Oh. But he's going to have a really good flank. Don't forget, he can micro with the medevac and pick up the injured uh, Thor's. But he's not doing that. I don't think it's even going to matter, Tasteless. GG! GG! And Hyun takes game number three. You know, that that was a weird game. I mean, that it was, was a, it weird was a great because game, but... Innovation actually got himself into a spot that every Terran wishes he could be in every game. And in fact, he technically saw the Spire. I don't yeah. think he clicked on it. I don't think he realized what was going on because he was micro no, so no, heavily. It was, it was this really weird moment where he saw the Mutas. We saw the mutas going down. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, he's got mutas. Then we go to his base, and I'm like, 
There is no engineering bay yeah. there. Um, so that's that's why Hyun had a chance. Bogus felt like he, or Innovation felt like he had yeah. to attack across the map there. Well, you know, these guys, um, they don't have a ton. This is not, I'm not saying that they're not good, but this is not MVP. They don't have a ton of stage experience. Yeah. And, you know, this is about as big as it gets. So to be here in front of all these people, uh, you know, maybe it was nerves. I don't know. John 2012, I totally agree. Taste Dosis is vice president. <laughs> uh, so, uh, map number four is, is Daybreak. Um, now, I, this is the moment where Taren can, can really do this. Well, he's, he's got to win this one or he's out. So yeah, I guess yeah. he better. Uh, you know, Daybreak, it's going to be a good map. This is, every game we've had so far has been a little bit weird. Nothing totally standard. This is the one map, though, that we might see just that totally standard play out of both players and see, you know, who is the better macro player. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree 100%. Um, Daybreak also, I think, best map we've got so far in StarCraft 2. Yeah, I, I think it's a phenomenal map. I love the games that it makes and the different strats you can use on it. Will Innovation proxy again? He could. Totally could. I think the fact that he did that in game one means that we're probably going to have the Zerg player checking for that. Yeah. I yeah. think there's no way in hell he won't send out a drone, but he could do it. We'll see. You guys having fun out there? All the nerds together. Nerd Thanksgiving here at the GSL. All right, we're getting closer and closer to starting this. It looks like the players have confirmed that they're ready. Yes, also, they both uh, you know, saying good job on that last game. And it was actually a really cool last game. I love casting games like that. Yeah, it was kind of wild. I really thought Hyun was going to be dead after he lost all those drones. But nice comeback with the Mutas. Yeah, yeah, super nice comeback, and then getting the right number of roaches out just in time. He, he predicted that. He said, all right, there's no way this guy's going to go into the late game. He is going to attack me super uh, early here. Yeah. And all I have to do is have the army here defend it, and I'll be fine. Indeed. All right, guys. We're from Seoul, Korea, but right now we're in Las Vegas. We're bringing you the best StarCraft 2 players in the world, Hyun and Innovation, here at goldtv.net.